Denzel was a really good person, and he didn't deserve this. I don't deserve this. Today marks two years since a hit and run killed 19 year old Cordell Bragner on Old Knoxville Highway in Sevier County. A woman driving along the road spotted the body of that victim and called for help. Investigators say whoever hit him drove off and never came forward. Tenders reporter Gabrielle Hayes spoke to the mother of that young man about what she calls his angel day. Gabrielle. Well, John, it's an emotional day for Cheryl Brigner. She says she has a lot of support, and as she remembers her son, she waits to find out what exactly happened two years ago today. If you ask Cheryl Brigner what her son was like, she'd tell you he was the kind of kid who knew how to crack a smile. He was a really happy person. He liked to make people laugh. Two years ago, on July 15th, 2017, he was hit by a car and passed away. Cordell was still, you know, one of our good friends. But Brigner chooses to look at it like this. This is my son's angel day, so it means a lot. It happened on Old Knoxville Highway in Sevier County. Friends and family immediately put up a memorial in the spot where he died. A memorial that has only grown in the last two years. New stuff pops up every now and again. More flowers, more pictures, more love. I want it to stick out so everybody can remember him. Remembering Cordell is something his mom says should be a community effort. As of today, the investigation is still open, and officials say there's nothing new to report. I just really would like to know who done this. A question, she says, really hurts. Cordell was a really good person, and he didn't deserve this. I don't deserve this. While the pain still lingers, Brigner plans to keep waiting, keep pushing, and keep Cordell's memory alive along Old Knoxville Highway. Well, his favorite color was red. And maybe with a little more time and a little more hope, she'll get the answers she's looking for and the peace she's praying for. I just want to know what happened. Some closure would be nice. Now today, Brigner and two of Cordell's childhood friends spent the day tending to his memorial. They say doing it together keeps his memory alive. And if you have any information about what happened that day, you are asked to call the Sevierville Police Department. John, let's hope they get some answers. Gabrielle, thank you. We move to the forecast now and we'll see some serious heat return to tomorrow. How about that end to today? Gorgeous shot there of the sunset along Chilawi Lake and we turn to Chief Meteorologist Todd Howe for more on what we're going to see tomorrow. Todd, 88 today. Are we going to go higher tomorrow? Yeah, let's go up about four degrees or so. Uh, 92 tomorrow. We're going to be talking more about that heat and uh, some humidity. You know, the humidity at, well, actually will be slightly lower tomorrow. That will allow with a little bit of dry air in the afternoon, hotter temperatures. But before we talk about the heat and humidity, yes, back to a viewer submitted photo tonight. Patricia Lena, Laney, excuse me, posted this on Facebook. Sunset on Chilhowie Lake, gorgeous. Matter of fact, I think Patricia put four different pictures, so you can take a closer look on our Facebook weather page and uh, gorgeous. Here's a look at your Tuesday at a glance, but get right to it. Morning clouds, muggy starts 71, partly cloudy at noontime, 85, quickly heating up. There's that 92. It's going to be mostly sunny and hot. Again, morning clouds, afternoon sun, slight chance for an isolated thunder shower, but really a little better chance over the mountains. So right now we are looking at a mostly cloudy sky, and here's our future cast. Again, we'll have some of that morning cloud cover, a little patchy fog early. And the sun comes out and just a slight chance for a few isolated thunder showers toward the mountains. The better chance comes Wednesday from Barry's moisture. We'll pick it up there with the rest of the week's forecast as well as the weekend, John. Todd, we'll look forward to it. See you in just a few minutes. Right. Seeing a plateau or decline in drug overdoses is fantastic news, but there's so much more work to be done. The work is certainly not over, but there is some good news tied to the opioid epidemic. For the first time in almost three decades, data from the Centers for Disease Control indicates OD deaths nationwide are going down. The numbers of projected deaths nationwide is down more than 3,000 from 2017. That would mean 69,300 people died of an overdose last year. The last time the number went down, in 1990, 8,400 people died of an overdose. Here in Knox County, the numbers aren't final yet, but this year is on track to be below last year. 10 News reporter Cole Sullivan spoke with anti-drug advocates who say, again, this fight is far from over. Cole? John, the Metro Drug Coalition says one death is one too many, but they say increased awareness and more Narcan in the community have made a difference. 
In a deadly drug epidemic, a glimmer of hope. Seeing a plateau or decline in drug overdoses is fantastic news. Preliminary data from the Centers for Disease Control shows the first drop in nationwide overdose deaths in 29 years. It's not much, just 4.4 percent, but every data point is a life. This is someone's mother, brother, son, friend, whatever it may be. Deborah Kraus with the Metro Drug Coalition says even with a nationwide decline, there's more work to be done. One is definitely still one too many. In Knox County, preliminary data from the DA shows 133 deaths so far this year from drug overdoses. That's down 37 people from this time last year. Kraus says there's one big reason why, Narcan. Getting the life-saving drug in more hands has helped make a difference. Any um, person can carry naloxone, and every second in a situation of an overdose matters. The number of naloxone uses reported to the health department went up 7% last year. Now, Metro Drug wants more people to carry the medication. I think having more individuals in our community being able to readily have naloxone has definitely made an impact on the great work already that our first responders have been doing. She says breaking the OD cycle requires more than just first responders to be the first to help and more new ideas that can make a difference. There's always work to do to continue to find new innovative ideas to help people stay in the recovery journey. Krause says helping families with young children is important too, making sure kids whose parents use drugs don't grow up to do so themselves. John. Cole Sullivan on the update, thank you. This week, 10 News is teaming up with the Metro Drug Coalition for a drug take back event. You can bring unwanted medication to our North Knoxville studios to be disposed of safely. That is Friday, July 19th from noon until 6. Rangers in the Great Smoky Mountains say they aren't looking to punish a man who forced a close encounter with a mother black bear and her cubs. Rangers say, for one, they don't know who he is. None of the witnesses were able to put him with a particular car or license plate. Instead, Rangers hope to use this video as an education tool, reinforcing that 50 yard rule. Saturday in Cades Cove, you see that man comes within a few yards of a mother bear who then bluff charges him. Rangers say it's one example of a much larger problem. We can't be everywhere all the time. There's 11.4 million people. There's 1,600 bears. So self-policing is something that can certainly help us help protect bears here in the park. This year, Rangers already recorded more than 100 reports of people coming too close to both bears and elk. Again, park rules call for staying 50 yards away from all wildlife. Governor Bill Lee faces some vocal critics after signing a bill that recognizes Nathan Bedford Forrest Day in Tennessee. Forrest was an early leader of the racist KKK. Tennessee law requires the governor to sign the proclamation every year, making July 13th the day honoring the Confederate general. Governor Lee did tell the Tennessean he hadn't looked closely at the law, but did sign the proclamation because he had to. Now lawmakers are calling for change. Racism is not a value of the more majority of Tennesseans and our state needs to put that face forward. You know, we could even make the arguments about the proclamations. If they would want to refer that to the Historical Commission, I'd be okay. Representative Gloria Johnson says Nashville Senator Jeff Yarborough has already taken early steps in creating a bill to change the law. Tonight, city leaders focused on the progress made in Knoxville surrounding the homeless population. Mayor Madeline Rojero says the city and community leaders support what's known as the housing first model. Tonight, a group of advocates talked about new affordable housing and permanent supportive housing projects that are underway. The mayor says the key is getting buy in from a host of groups. There's a lot of good work being done in this community by a lot of different partners, including the faith community. And uh, so I'm, I feel good about that, but we obviously still have a long way to go. Mayor Rojero says another big project is the low barrier shelter at the empty Salvation Army thrift store building. It's partnering with Volunteer Ministry Center for that project. It is set to be complete by November. In a few months, Honor Air Knoxville will again make history. Its first ever all-female flight takes off in the spring of 2020. A plane load of women veterans will go on the all-expenses one-day trip to Washington to see memorials built in their honor. A woman who served 40 years in the Air Force is helping organize this special trip. What you have as you look around is affirmation. I did this. I was a part of this. I served too. 
So I believe it will be affirmation and uh, a sense of pride. The all women flight in spring will be flight number 30 and you can find a link to apply through our story at the WBIR app. Wildlife agents need help collecting invasive carp. Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency tweeted a video today asking for people to save invasive carp that are nine inches long or less. They ask if you catch one to put it on ice or freeze it and then contact TWRA immediately. If you can't save it, the agency asks for people to email pictures of the fish. Again, they can cause big problems in rivers and lakes. A new vegan restaurant is open in downtown Knoxville. Copita is a falafel and hummus bar. Its menu features local farm fresh produce. They've received several uh, additions there, bowls, pitas, salad options. They're located on Gay Street next to the Hyatt. Tonight we are highlighting